Hello everybody and welcome to Forever Motorsports on Forever Sports. We have just finished arguably the best qualifying session of the season. I actually don't even think it's arguable. It is definitely the best qualifying session. Shoo, I'm still in awe of what we just watched. Incredible, incredible driving from stalwarts and new drivers and the lol lot. It was just incredible from the get-go from Q1 to Q2 to Q3. Track evolving, major incidents, uh, major discussions that happened and things. I mean unbelievable stuff just happened there in Monaco. Yes, certainly a very, very exciting qualifying session in the Principality. Certainly one that we expected. I mean, Monaco always gives us a brilliant qualifying session, that is for sure. Qualifying is often more exciting than the race on Sunday. And well, once again, we got treated to a great qualifying session here today. Big, big news though, of course, going into Sunday is the fact that Sergio Perez will be starting all the way at the back of the grid due to him crashing out in Q1. With about 11 minutes left to go of the session, uh, Sergio Perez lost the rear of his car into turn one and just completely smashed his car into the barriers, completely destroying his uh, left rear, possibly as well destroying his gearbox. Yeah, going to be big news that the gearbox is gone because that's going to be need needing a gearbox replacement, of course. And there's only so many of those allowed uh, throughout the season before penalties start being incurred. And of course, it's not going to make much of a difference before tomorrow because he's going to start at the back of the grid regardless. But going forward, that's going to be a huge thing, especially considering the Drivers' Constructors' Championship. He's the one challenging for Stappen, but now he's right at the back in the racetrack and it's most impossible to overtake. So Sergio Perez dealt a very, very hard blow. Unfortunately, he can only have himself to blame. He was the one that crashed the car out there. Other drivers that were eliminated in Q1 included Guan Yu Zhou, Nico Hulkenberg, Kevin Magnussen and Logan Sargent. None of them managing to get out of the drop zone. Yes, I think uh, most of those were rather expected with uh, the likes of Guan Yu Zhou, Logan Sargent, uh, not necessarily having the greatest weekend so far. I was a little bit surprised to see the two Hasses being dropped out in Q1, but nonetheless, they are out of that session and will be starting 16th for Logan Sargent, 17th for Magnussen, 18th for Hulkenberg, Joe down in 19th, and Perez, of course, with that crash, all the way down in 20th. Then we had the Q2 session, which was also quite exciting. We had... Uh, uh, Lewis Hamilton down in that bottom five for quite some time. It looked like he was certainly struggling to get out there um, and then luckily able to, to just find some pace and get himself out of that bottom zone. But our bottom five drivers for Q2 are Valtteri Bottas down in 15th place, Lance Stroll in 14th. Certainly a very difficult day for him here in Monaco with his teammate having a brilliant, brilliant qualifying session, but him being all the way down in 14th. It's it's quite polar opposites for those two Aston Martin drivers. We then had Alexander Albon in 13th, Nick de Vries finishing in 12th, and Oscar Piastri finishing his first Monaco Grand Prix weekend uh, qualifying session in 11th. Yeah, Lewis Hamilton doing very well to just, in his very last lap, and the, it was the last car to go over the line, managing to put himself into the first, uh, into the last qualifying session, of course. Uh, as you say, the Lance Stroll not able to find pace there, just seemed to go slowly around the whole time. Uh, didn't make sense to me when you considered uh, Aston Martin's uh, Fernando Alonso was doing so well in comparison. Not much else to speak about in that Q2, well, other than the fact that Lance Stroll did, uh, did go out there, so... We also had a little incident from yes. Lando Norris, who managed to hit the wall in the Marina Bay chicane. Uh, he just clipped his left front in the turn 10 part of the chicane and broke that steering arm. Luckily, he was able to nurse his car back into the pits, but not off, well, not before uh, hitting the wall and breaking his front wing as well, but still able to get himself back to the pits. And then uh, they were very, very fortunate to be able to, I think he actually did get a time on the board, but still not necessarily being able to put in a great time in Q3. Yes, of course, managing to put a decent enough time in Q2 to make it into Q3. They then did all of those repairs in between and then just about halfway through the session, released him out onto the track. So fantastic work from the engineers there. But unfortunately, Lando Norris, as you said, not able to put in a decent enough time to push him anywhere further up. He finishes in 10th. Yuki Tsunoda in 9th. George Russell in 8th. Pierre Gasly in 7th. Lewis Hamilton in 6th. The Mercedes not managing to get too much pace with their brand new upgrades. Although they were looking half decent in some of the, the practice sessions. But Lewis Hamilton complaining that the car was very difficult to drive uh, throughout that qualifying session. So interesting to note that. Carlos Sainz in the Ferrari in 5th. And then complete out loud of nowhere. Esteban Ocon of the Alpine in 4th position. Uh, so fantastic work from the uh, Alpine driver there. And uh, before moving yes. into our top 3. 
The Monegasque and home driver, Charles Leclerc, finishes only in third with that Ferrari and the two incredible battle right at the end there. We should just talk us through that. Yes, well, it looked like Fernando Alonso, well, Max Verstappen, of course, went out very early to set a benchmark time for himself as well as for everyone else. Not a very good time from him. It was a 112.1 at the time. Uh, then Fernando Alonso went out there and set the first 111s of the race weekend. Uh, and he was quite rapid out there, uh, improving on his time even more. Max Verstappen uh, looking like he was chasing a little bit. Fernando Alonso then, in the final few minutes, set a blisteringly hot lap time of 111.449. It did not look like Max Verstappen was going to beat it on his final lap, as he was not improving uh, on that time of Fernando Alonso's in the first and second sector. But then in that third and final sector, he just managed to pull some time out of nowhere and just take that pole position lap uh, uh well pole position place of course with a 111.365 so so close between himself and fernando alonso indeed fantastic racing for max verstappen under such huge pressure knowing that he had to get a uh, pull all the stops especially in that final sector i'm sure they would have told him uh, on the radio i'm hoping to have said move it because he needed to really get going there and luckily he managed to and i'll tell you the celebrations that red bull garage and that aston martin garage just shows you how much red bull had to fight for that pole position because it was not as easy as the rest of them everything else was always on p1 and yeah easy p1 this was oh my word you made p1 because that was so difficult and so dramatic right at the end there unlucky for fernando alonso in that aston martin most people rooting for him of course to go and start on pole in monaco but he is in the front of the grid can he pull something out of the hat as they start the race tomorrow we can only see on forever motorsports as well uh, so be sure to stream that tomorrow with us but yeah, what a qualifying session it was in Monaco. Yes, it was certainly one to watch. And if you did miss it, you can always go back and watch our Grand or well, our Quali uh, watch along uh, and just catch up a little bit there. It was certainly a very, very exciting session. Yeah, just going to go run through the grid one more time. So starting on the front of the grid, Max Verstappen, Fernando Alonso. In that second row, Charles Leclerc and the Alpine of Esteban Ocon. Fifth and sixth will be Carlos Sainz and Lewis Hamilton. Seventh, Pierre Gasly. Eighth, George Russell. Yuki Sonoda in t ninth. And Lando Norris rounding off the top ten. Oscar Piastri then in eleventh. And Ries carry on from there. Yes, Nick de Vries then in P12. Albon, thirteenth. Stroll, fourteenth. Valtteri Bottas having a good day out there in the Alfa Romeo in fifteenth. Logan Sargent down in 16th, Kevin Magnussen 17th, and his teammate Nico Hulkenberg down in 18th, Guan Yu Zhou 19th, and then the big talking point of the day, of course, is Sergio Perez, the alleged king of street circuits, is unfortunately out of Q1, and is going to be starting all the way from P20 tomorrow in the race. Indeed. So that was qualifying in Monaco. Definitely the best qualifying session of the season so far. And Monaco, of course, we know there's not too many overtakes, but if uh, there's anything... You uh, that somebody can do on this grid. It's uh, Fernando Alonso. Fernando Alonso, of course, the uh, the uh, wise old fox, as Reese alludes to uh, quite common, uh, co commonly. And uh, yeah, Fernando Alonso, if there's somebody who could try and take Max Verstappen into that first corner, it's going to be him. So that's yeah, going to be very interesting to watch. And that's all in build up to the Monaco Grand Prix. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Reese, have it been Reese? Do you have any yes. other comments? Well, just that tomorrow's race should be extremely, extremely exciting to watch. We have rain predicted for Monaco tomorrow afternoon. I've just checked on my phone. We do have rain predicted in the afternoon in Monaco. So hopefully that will throw a bit of a spanner in the works for the race. So it should certainly be very exciting to watch. So please do join us for that. Indeed. And uh, guys, thank you so much for watching Forever Motorsports uh, on Forever Sports. I've been Mark. Reese has been Reese, And we will see you at the race.